So we have an array of characters, and I've put the word hello inside that array of characters. And then I've got a little if statement, and I'm checking, is the contents of the message the same as the word hello? At least that's, that's what I would intend to do, to say the strings are the same or the strings are not the same. And you may be surprised at the results here when I run this, it says the strings are not the same. What's going on? If I did the same kind of an if statement with a variable that's not an array of characters, like my variable x, that's a simple integer, and I say, is that the same as one? And then I could print x is one, then it would go in the if statement because the equal equal the comparison of the contents of x and one, it would say x is one. Um, why is that not true with an array of characters? Well, with an array of characters, you can't compare the contents of what's in the array um, with using equal equal. Um, it just doesn't work that way. Um, using the name of an array will give you the address of that spot in memory. So it's saying this address in memory is not the same as this constant hello. So how do you compare compare the contents of what's in that variable with the word hello if you can't just use equal equal. Well, we're going to include another header, string.h, and that opens up the possibility of using a whole bunch of string functions. One is string compare, and it is a function that takes in two input arguments. Um, we're going to pass in the two things we want to compare, the variable message and hello, and it's going to return a result. And if you look at the documentation, it will return zero if the two strings are the same, have the same contents inside of them, and it'll return a negative number or a positive number if they're not the same, depending on whether or not your first item is less than or greater than your second item you're passing in. So I run this function with just those two changes, adding a new header and changing the equal equal to a string compare, and I run it, and now I get those results I was looking for. The strings are the same. There are lots of good functions available if you include string.h. I'm going to show you another common one, and that is string length. So if I wonder what the string length is of this variable message, then I can take a look at that by doing string length. A lot of these functions start with str, which is short for string, and by string I mean an array of characters. So let's see what the string length of messages, that's our variable that has the word hello in it, and I run that, and it'll say, well, the string length, it does, it counts H-E-L-L-O, there's five different characters there, and it says the strings are the same. I'm going to change this to by, and now we run it, our string length is three, we have three characters, and now the message isn't hello, so it says the strings are not the same. So why do I think string length is really important? Let me try another command that we often use to get the size of something in byte. So we have a size of function and let's see what that returns when we pass in our variable message. So that's the size of message and we might think it'll return the same thing if each character is a byte. We might think it would also return uh, the same number uh, if there's three characters, we might think we'd get a three here, but we run this and the size of returns four. Well, why is that? What is inside of there besides BYE for by? Well, let me take a look. I'm going to replace my if else with a for loop that goes through and looks at everything inside of this array message. Uh, I didn't hard code a side there, size there, so I wonder how many bytes it's using. Looks like it's using four. What's in each byte? So I run this, and the first time through the loop, it looks at the first thing in that array, so in this position, and I printed out the character with percent %c as, long, as well as the ASCII value for that, so with percent %d. So if you look at an ASCII table, capital B is the same as 66 in a decimal, and then Y is the same as 121, E, and then what is at the end here? What's at this, and this fourth, um, byte, uh, it is the null character, which is zero. So it's not going to show up when you print it as a character because it's just going to look like a blank, an empty space there. But when I printed it with a percent %d, we saw it was the null character or a zero. Very important that strings always have a null character at the end of them. 
Um, even if I say, let's say the size of this is 10, so we've got some extra space at the end. I run it and now it's going to say, well, the string length, it's really going to only look like at the valid characters. That's still three. Um, but the size of, we've allocated 10 different bytes for this variable. So we've got 10 bytes here, and it'll have the word by, and then every other character in there is a null character. You're going to definitely want to leave some space at the end of your arrays of characters for at least one null character. And it's not a bad idea to have a little extra space in case you want to change the word and instead of by you could put something else in there so how would you do that it's going to be more than a simple assignment statement like this we'll see what happens when we run that it doesn't work so an assignment statement with an equal sign does not work we would need to look for a special string function that will do that so i'm going to do let's do a string there's string cat if i want to concatenate them um, string copy. I want to copy over top of that variable message and I want to copy the word hello in there. And we'll take a look at that. And it starts out as by and then we end up copying the word hello in there, H-E-L-L-O, plus we've got a bunch of null characters at the end. Alright, that's enough for one day and string functions.